What's up, everybody? It's Jeremy from the Renegade Coder, and today I'm looking to make yet another one of those Python videos. Uh, in particular, today I want to look at uh, how to map two lists together in Python. You might have seen my article about it. Uh, essentially, what I want to be able to do is take like a list of keys that might look something like this. Call these keys and then map these to a list of values. So in other words, the final list or the final mapping should look like this. Me maps to one, you maps to two, and they maps to three. This is sort of what we want to accomplish. We want to map keys to values and then create a dictionary as a result. Uh, but there are two things to keep in mind before we actually dig into this. Uh, first, it probably makes sense or it might seem obvious, but the keys and values lists need to be the same length. Uh, if we have maybe, let's say, a values mapping that has one more item in it, you could imagine that when we perform the mapping, we're going to lose one of these values. Um, and then likewise, when we convert these, we have to have unique keys. If for some reason we have this, where me repeats itself, you'll find that this isn't going to work when we actually perform our mapping. Even though now values has four values and keys has four keys, the mapping isn't going to work because you can't have me appear in, in your dictionary twice since keys have to be unique. If we're going to create a solution to this problem, uh, I'm going to go ahead and build up a couple lists. And for the sake of Todoroki here, we're going to actually use uh, My Hero Academia characters and their quirks. So we have this array here, or this list, uh, with the character names. So I'll go ahead and use Deku, Bakugo, and Todoroki. And then we'll map these characters to their quirks. So Deku's quirk is one for all. Bakugo's quirk is explosion. And then Todoroki's quirk is half cold, half hot. And then one of the ways that we can actually map the characters to their quirks, since we have three and three, all the assumptions are taken care of, we can actually use zip, which, if you've used this before, is going to actually create this zip object that when you call next on it, will give you a tuple of these together. So Deku and One for All are together, and you get the idea. Now that we have our zip, we can now wrap that in a dictionary constructor and get our mapping. So now Deku's mapped to One for All, Bakugo's wrapped to Explosion, and Todoroki is mapped to Half Cold, Half Hot. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. It's actually a quick one-liner. Uh, I think it's pretty elegant, uh, but there are two more solutions that we can take a look at. Another way to map these two lists is to use a dictionary comprehension. So if we have our characters list and our quirks list, we can actually map these together using a dictionary comprehension where we say key colon value for key comma value in, and then we'll do our zip again, characters to quirks. And then we get the exact same mapping that we got previously, probably with a little bit of extra code. But I like the dictionary comprehension because it's a little bit more customizable. Uh, in this case, we could actually do something interesting, like maybe change each one of the values. So we could say, like, oh, all the quirks need to include an exclamation point. Yeah, and then with this, you'll have Deku map to you know, an excited version of One for All, Bakugo, and a massive explosion, uh, and those sort of things. So. Finally, I want to show you a bit of a brute force solution because the previous two solutions don't do a great job of handling sort of the two warnings that I brought up previously. Uh, remember that if we have two arrays that are different lengths, uh, we'll run into some issues. And if we have a, an array of keys that contains duplicate keys, we'll also run into issues. So what we'll do is we'll actually create a mapping that looks empty. And then we'll say for each key comma value, in zip of characters and quirks. And that's going to look pretty much exactly like what we've looked at so far. 
But then we're going to have a section here uh, where we check if the key is already in the mapping. If it is, in this case, we're not going to do anything. I'll go ahead and just say pass. But you could argue that uh, this section handles duplicate keys. So whatever you choose to put here because you have duplicate keys, like you may have seen a previous uh, video I made talking about flipping keys and values. Uh, a lot of times values are duplicate. So what you can do when you flip them is you could make an array here and then append uh, the duplicate keys. But otherwise, and then we'll go ahead and make the else where we actually just make my mapping at key equal to value. And then that will give you your mapping, which is the exact same mapping that we have. But as you can imagine, if the lists were different in length, or if the key list contained duplicate keys, uh, you could handle that here in sort of a brute force fashion. All right, at this point, I like to do a little bit of a performance check. Uh, since I'm lazy, I'm actually just going to copy the strings in directly from the article. Um, but feel free to uh, type these in by hand. All right, so as you can see here, the strings are a little bit different than the ones we were looking at, but all that matters that we have our setup string, which is gonna have two uh, lists that map to each other. And then we're gonna have our zip dictionary solution, our dictionary comprehension solution, and then our loop solution. And then at this point, all we need to do to actually run this is run import time it, and then we'll call min, and if you've seen this before, basically we do time it dot repeat, and then we pass in the statement, which in this case, we'll start with the zip solution. And then we'll pass in the setup, which is just setup. And then we'll pass in the repeat. I just like to pick 10. It doesn't really matter. And then we just run it. Uh, and this might take a couple of seconds. Who knows? Uh, and then it'll report the actual time right underneath. Okay, so then 0.71. Uh, we'll run this again with the dictionary comprehension. Okay, a little bit faster. And then we'll run this again with the loop, which we'll see. Okay, so there are your three solutions. Uh, if we compare them with the measurements I took before, they pretty much fall right in line. Uh, actually, the zip solution seemed to run faster when I ran it previously, but... You get the idea. These all run around the same ballpark. Uh, none of them are dramatically faster than any of the other ones. Uh, but that's it. That's the performance. Feel free to take that with a grain of salt. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks again for sticking around. I appreciate it. If you really want to show your appreciation, make sure you like and subscribe. That shows YouTube that the video was good. Otherwise, uh, I'd appreciate it if you head over to Patreon and became a patron. Uh, right now I have three tiers, uh, and you can see all five of my patrons here on the left side. If you'd like to be added to that list, a dollar's enough uh, to get in. Otherwise, I just started a store. I had one previously, but I decided to launch one again to focus mostly on the Python niche. Right now I have a Python cheat sheet in there as well as a Python lab, so if you're interested in any of that, head over there. And if you do head over there, you can use the coupon code RENEGADE straight up. I will flash that on the screen somewhere uh, so you can save 10% off of anything in the store. Uh, finally, big shout out to Darkfade17 for sharing this artwork in the background. Uh, you'll probably see a lot more of their art as well as the uh, previous artists from the last video. Uh, they've been nice enough to share some of their stuff with me, so you should be seeing more of that in the future. Otherwise, thanks for watching.